were to catch up with him. You didn't say your people were destroyed because they didn't get a PhD. You couldn't be more clear. Then all through the scriptures, you kept saying, I'm talking to you. I'm giving you principles. 1189 chapters. I'm going to show you step by step. I'm going to give you laws and principles. And every time you obey a law, I'm going to hand you some money. And when you do it again, I'm going to hand you some more money. And when you follow my instructions, I'm going to give you some more money. And when you make me happy because you obeyed a principle I gave you. Some of your principles are fascinating. Where you should agree with your adversary quickly. That's kind of a puzzle to us. But every time... You spoke an instruction. You described a reward for following it. Every time you told us what to do. You are a reward God. And we love that in you. We love that in you. We love how reward oriented you are. The only thing you control is the laws you spoke and the reward system you promised. Thank you today for Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. I thank you today for Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me and I shall be healed. I thank you today for Matthew 7, 7. That if we ask long enough, we would we would be receivers. I thank you for Luke 6, 38, that you told us if we would examine the seeds we have been given to sow, conversation, love, kindness, words, inspiration, money, whatever we decided we were going to sow, that would control the eventual harvest. Luke 6, 38. Thank you for telling Peter in Mark chapter 10, Lord, that you were going to give him a territorial anointing of houses and lands for every single dollar he would give to your work, give up, lose, just give in to your work, that it would come back a hundredfold. And you don't lie. Thank you for it, Father. I'm going to start off saying something a little bit shocking. It's so simple. I'd say probably about three of you is going to get mad. That's okay with me. The anger of people has never burdened me. My anger has burdened me. I never get afraid of somebody getting mad at me. What I get afraid is when I get mad at somebody. That's when all my mistakes start. My mistakes don't begin when somebody doesn't respect me. My mistakes begin when I become angry myself. Jamaica is here. It's where God taught me about the power of a moment. I learned about time management in Jamaica. It's quite a story. Quite a story. 17 pages on one word in a hotel by myself. I don't think there were four people I saw the whole time I was in the hotel in Jamaica, but that's where God taught me. And Jamaica is with me today. Jacques, Mark, Paul Wright, Stacy, Donna Johnson, Donna, Jerry Jones, Amber. Is that the Amber that's going to be working with me? 
Amber, thank you. Thank you for accepting my invitation to help me and help me in my ministry. That means a lot to me. And your spirit, we were talking about you this morning. You're part of my, my uh, greatest goal, Amber. You're a part of it. Dr. Diane Hudgens Brown. David, Jackie, Jackie Payne. Oh, I like that phrase, Father of Wisdom. Boy, I'm a man looking for it for sure. David, I would probably be more appropriate probably for me to say a pursuer of wisdom. Somebody asked me one time, what got you into wisdom? I said, being so stupid. Oh, I hate my mistakes. I want to say some very blunt things. This, I won't hold you long, because I got a lot of, I got a lot of commitments. The simple solution to your money world. What I'm about to say is so utterly simple. Why do we make money complicated? I don't know. Is it? Not really. We go to college hour after hour, drive 45 minutes to a college, sit there and take notes, test, just to get this. We get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, take a bath, shower, get dressed, go get in the car, drive to the gasoline station, get out. Was it five bucks an hour, five bucks a gallon, and we fill up, and we have seventy-five, eighty dollars worth, and we got to pull out one of these just to get gas in a car. Then the car breaks down. Then we got to go to the phone, and we got to call, and call, and call, and see if we can find somebody to repair a car. All of life is in pursuit of this. All of life, money. creates experiences. Money is exchange for knowledge, wisdom. This is necessary for survival. What's the solution? I'm going to tell it to you, and three or four of you are going to be mad, and you're going to stop watching. And I don't give a rip if you do. You decide your experiences. The difference in people is who they trust. The difference in people is who they're willing to listen to. The difference in men is whose mentorship is worth pursuing. Now, I'm going to say it's going to be very, very simple. This is a money program today. Ready for this incredible revelation. Daddy, how do I get money? Mama, I need money. You find somebody who has money and you make them happy and they give you some of it. And that's the way life works. Well, Brother Mike, thank you for that. That book right there took me 19 years to write. And I've offered to some people for $5 and they don't think 19 years of research on Solomon's wealth was worth five bucks. Stupid will always be poor. Stupid can get rich. Nobody stupid can get rich. Stupid's different than ignorant. Ignorance is when you don't know something. Stupid is when you close your ears to people who do know. When you don't admire someone who has it. See these hundred dollar bills? I don't like one dollar bills. I know you do, I don't. 
I like $100 bills. It's going to be a real tough program today here. Brother Mike, what's the mystery of money? You find somebody who has some and you make them happy. How? Tell them jokes? I don't know. Everybody needs a different road. That's all. I want to tell you my story. You find somebody who's got some money and you make them happy. The place you create pleasure is the place your money world begins. The place you solve a problem is the place favor is born. Favor I think you could take every prayer I've ever asked for favor in my lifetime, put it in less than 60 minutes. I don't pray for favor. Nothing wrong with it, but I don't pray long for favor. I try to solve a problem. I try to solve a problem. How do you solve a problem? I want to tell you my little story. I want you to look at this. You find somebody with a problem and you solve it. You find somebody that has money and you make them happy. Decisions decide wealth. There are seven decisions that will double your income in probably three to nine months. Let me tell you what triggered. Do you have my, uh, my 101? I want to tell you a personal illustration that happened this morning here in my office. 101. Maybe on the... I want to tell them a little story. Is that it? 101 wisdom is both pictures on them. It's a little piece of paper. I'm going to tell you an illustration. You find somebody, your money's linked to somebody because you ain't got any. Okay, let's look here. I ain't got any money. How am I going to get some? Well, what do you have? Well, I have a desire for money. That's a good place. Desire the righteous shall be granted. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. The Bible is filled with these secrets. It takes 40 chapters a day. I read the Bible through over 100 times. 40 chapters a day. It takes 56 hours to read the Bible through. Thank you. There's one more. Right over there, there's a book called 101. I want you to show it. I want, I want to show you and in one sense, it may seem wrong, but I want, to, I want to show you what happened a few minutes ago that triggered my teaching on this. Then I want to tell you my 12-year-old story when I was 12. Then I'll tell you why a man gave me $100,000 to speak for one hour. I want to tell you this. I can't take very long. It doesn't need very long. It takes... Someone receiving. If you're a receiver, if you're a receiver, you'll probably double your income in a matter of weeks. Probably a year. Because one of the most difficult decisions on earth in the money world is what are you willing to stop doing? Number two, who are you willing to admire and pursue? Three, who are you willing to train? Because everybody has to be trained. Everybody. Dogs have to be trained. Everybody has to be trained. Canada's here, Jamaica, Nigeria, South Africa, Spain, UK. One of my best encouragements in my life is Prophet Joshua 
homes. Clint Ross. Pastor Clint, please listen to what I'm saying. Please listen. Pastor Clint Ross is one of the few preachers I know. Very, very few that understands the law of honor. Almost nobody I know. I don't know of a person more knowledgeable on the earth about honor than Clint Ross and Prophet Joshua Holmes. Those are two people that know more about honor than almost anybody I know. Those two men, Prophet Joshua Holmes and Clint Ross. Valerie, those are good words. What I'm about to share is, is rich, rich, rich beyond words. Joseph Wesley is here. Thank you for those words. I need those, Brother Joseph. The Wisdom Bible is a life changer. I'm loving it. Thank you so much for writing it. There's no Bible like it on the earth. I only hate the small print. I hate that, but that's the only way I could get all my notes in there. 160 pages. Robert Walden. Robert, I didn't know you was Jamaican. God talked to me in Jamaica. Changed my world. Leanne smiles. Listen to this, Leanne. This is, you're a money woman. If God ever in the world raised up a millionaire, you've got the, the mind for it. Amber, it is an opportunity more than you know. I want to show you something. I want to walk you through a little event that happened this morning. The best graphics designer on the earth is a young lady named Gabriella. She's been with me for years. Nobody can touch her. Nobody's even close to her. Her greatest gift is adaptation. Under her graphics, she's got a sense for beauty. She's got a sense for beauty. I don't want another person, another person, when she does what she does. So this morning, this was a book somebody did years ago. Years ago. He was a good guy. Sarcastic, know-it-all, arrogant, but he was a good guy. Loved God, but always wanted to do things his way, his way, his way. Well, this is one of the best covers he ever made, and I liked it. I liked it. This is book 45. Gabriella put some beauty inside it and added colors and bars and moved words where you could feel them. And this morning, this morning's been a rough morning for me. Bear with me. I've been to the doctors this morning. I didn't know if I'd survive, but I'm here. I wrote her a two sentence little note because I'm wanting to put my wife Christina's picture on my books. We're fixing to print 10,000 and mail them to you. Every one of you will get a copy of this book. I taught some from it the other day. No better, no better wisdom anywhere in the world than what the Lord gives us. Silence cannot be misquoted, but is always misinterpreted. When you change your focus, you change your feelings. Those powerful things. And I said to Gabriella, Could you put, 
could you put me and Christina's picture on this little book? I love this part, but could you put our names on there also? And I want Christina's picture next to me. And I want her, I want my partners and friends to know she's in my world and the two of us are one. I don't want a wife with I don't want a life without a wife. I don't know I don't want a wife without a brain. I said, Would you mind? And it seemed like seconds as I was eating a chicken wrap from Chick-fil-A. As I was eating, I asked her, Would you mind seeing if you can put our picture? And within seconds, she came back with this. Not only did she put our names on the front of the book. I didn't know she was going to put the doctor part, but that's okay. As the seminary told me, said, you earned it. We dissected you for months and read every book you'd ever written before we gave you that honorarium doctor degree. I was thinking about that brother this morning, fabulous man of God, head of the seminar. Seminary also works with the FBI. See this? She added the book number on the front, which I like and want. Book 45. Can you see that? I wonder if y'all can see that. Can somebody bring me one of my thank you cards? If you get this today, you'll never be broke again the rest of your life. You'll never, unless you overspend. Stop negotiating. I want you to look at this again. There's a lesson in this. There's a life lesson for people who value money. A lot of people want money, but almost nobody values money. That's why they don't negotiate. That's why they throw it all away. They don't put a value on it. Stay with me here. Stay with me here. I prayed 42 years for a wife, dated hundreds. I know many hundreds of fabulous people, but they didn't click for me. Sometimes I didn't click for them. That's okay. Don't ever eat something you don't like. Much less invest your heart where you don't trust like your stomach needs food, your heart needs trust. That emotion is important. Now watch this. Watch this carefully. I asked Gabriella, did you know this is at the printer already? Did you know that we found a printer to print 10,000 of these? and they're ready to go to press. Everything is ready. Everything is set on go. <clears throat> it's been proved. Everything's ready. And I says, Gabriella, this morning, just a few minutes, could you put my picture and my baby, Christina, on there? I forgot to mention the book number, but she knows what I like. All your 
success in the money area depends on who you make happy. All of it. All of it. All of it. What problem you choose to solve. You can solve a $10 an hour problem or a $100 an hour problem. You can solve a problem cheerfully. You can solve it later. Solve it instantly. Make a promise to solve it. There's no mystery to money. Money is not complicated. Listen to this. I said, would you put me and Christina's picture on? There's three things you could have said. Dr. Murdoch, the printing company already has all the, all the uh, needs, what they need. They're, they're about to start it right now. We've already, everything's ready to go, uh, if you don't mind. Maybe she could have said, maybe we could do it on our next printing. She could have said, uh, this book is so small I'm not sure this is the right book to do it. Only a jackass fool argues with authority. Only a jackass fool resists leadership. You have to be an idiot like Lucifer to defy the God who created you. There's nothing smart about evil. Clever, yeah. Wisdom, zero. Watch this. She comes back within seconds with this. She didn't argue with me about what I want because I'm going to get what I want. Now, or tomorrow, but I'm going to have what I want. Me and Oral Roberts have a very strong similarity in one thing. He said, I'm not a man who can live with a need. Boy, I've thought on that 783 times. I'm not a man who can live with a need. I'm not a man who can live with a need. If I have a need, I have a need. And he said, either I break or the need breaks. But I'm not a man who can live with a need. All I ask, can you put our picture somewhere? I didn't know how in the world she could do that. My name takes up so much space here alone. And I want my picture on everything, everything. Why? Because nobody else wrote it. I wrote it. I want my picture on everything because people will not throw away pictures. And I don't want them to throw away my book. And she puts this out. Book 45. Look at it, family. Look at it, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. And I said to Gabriella, because gratitude decides all events in your life, I told my sisters, your reaction to gift number one decides the schedule of my gift number two. The deadliest relationship in your life is the person who kills the giver inside of you. And I brought her in here. I says, Gabriella, and I had my precious Christina standing beside me here at the office. By far, she's the smartest woman I've ever met. 
and certainly the top five smartest people I've ever met, male and female. And I says, I can't thank you enough. I said, I think you did this in 11 seconds. I could not believe she moved swiftly. She walked past her other 45 projects she's working on. She didn't say, can we wait till next week? I've got all these other, the printing's about to go. I've already talked to the printing press. They've already, we've already said, she didn't argue with me. There's seven people you need to stay away from. One is people who will argue about your desires. Two, people that don't agree with your decisions. You talk conversations to birth the highest level decision. That's the purpose of your round table discussion. And I looked at little Gabriella, she's from Peru. And I said, I'll give you a choice. I've got a beautiful thank you card that I can write here. Gabriella, thank you, thank you, thank you for creating the change in my book cover. A book cover is everything to me. That controls the flow of my inspiration. And I'm easily displeased. There's, I'm easy. If it's something I don't like, I don't like it. I don't adapt to what I don't like. I don't adapt to anything I don't like. I move my world until I find pleasure. I move my world until I'm in the center of joy. Life's too short not to find the center of your joy. And when your joy stops, you make changes. Swiftly and quickly. I said, here's my thank you note. I have another thank you note. A lot of people in religion are really against it. They don't like it, but I have another thank you note and it's a hundred dollar bill and you get to choose how I thank you. And I says, now, I'll turn it over so you can see the big 100 because when I tip people, I always tip where they can see the 100 so they don't have to wonder how should I respond to this? Is it a dollar bill? Is it a five? Is it a 10? Is it a two? Because sometimes I tip twos. Is it a 20? Is it a 50? Is it a 100? A smile came on her face. A smile came on her face. And she reached for the hundred dollar bill. Now this is bigger, but she wanted something littler. She wanted something small. This was big. This is a big thank you. Why didn't she take this? Big is not always good. Big is not always the best. And she accepted the hundred dollar bill. And I looked at her and turned it into a mentorship minute. And I says, Gabriella, I will always reward you for making me happy. I reward anybody that brings me joy. Any person of wisdom rewards the joy makers in their life. Because you have so many tear makers. She didn't question. 
She didn't argue with me. She didn't say, what about my other projects? She didn't say, Dr. Murdoch, I'm going to have to go find Christine and yours picture. I'm going to have to go through my computer and I'm going to have to. She didn't tell me everything she went through to make me happy. She didn't tell me the price she paid. She just came in and says, is this okay? And I saw Mike and Christina Murdoch on there. <sighs> Pastor John, Renee Poole. Now, I keep $100 bills for reward moments. I keep $100 bills for reward moments. And I keep a circle around me of people who look for ways to make me happy. It's the only kind of people you want in your life. Enemies show up voluntarily. You never have to call for adversaries. Isn't this powerful? Isn't that powerful? It's quite an illustration today, isn't it? Now, can I tell you, Money is not complicated. It's a reward system. It's a reward system. It's a reward system. It's a reward system. Money is a reward system. And all the money that's ever been on the earth is still here. All the money that's here has it gone to Pluto and Venus and Neptune and Mars? It's all still here. There's some basic facts today. There's no mystery to money. You find somebody who has some and you make them happy. And they share some of it. Don't make money so complicated. Brother Mike, I heard you have to have a PhD. Not true. Brother Mike, I hear that if you'll tithe, God will make you a millionaire in 12 months. Not true. Brother Mike, I hear that uh, if I really want a lot of money, I've got to have a big company and have a hire a lot of people to help me. And I've got to go around. Not true. This book, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived, took me 19 years to write it, 31 Master Keys. Dr. Marilyn Hickey said it's the greatest book that has ever been written. She buys them by the boxes and sends them to preachers all over the world. Dr. Marilyn Hickey, one of the top five smartest men in the world, doctor, or people in the world, Dr. Marilyn Hickey, Denver, Colorado. She buys this book by boxes. She said every preacher must read this book. I was 12. I wanted a paper route. So I sat on the back of a scooter with Larry Miller, a man, a young man down our street. And when he found out he was going to quit, he gave me a month to train with him. And whenever he, 
We trained and went through papers to the Navy people in Orange, Texas. The Texas Mothball Fleet was their title, big ships in Orange Port. And I stopped at every place with a sheet of paper and I had their name and address. And I says, I'm Mike Murdoch, your new paper boy. Ah, Mike, huh? Good to meet you, son. What can I do for you today? I said, I wanted to know where you wanted your newspaper. I throw twice a day, Enterprise in the morning at 4.30 and 4.30 in the afternoon, the Beaumont Journal. Would you like your newspaper in the front yard or in your driveway or behind the screen door here at your front door? And they looked at me. One said, son, I, that would help me a lot if you'd put my paper behind the screen door. Then I'd always know if it's there. I had others say, don't put it on the, the grass because the grass smears the, the printing ink on the newspaper. There's a lot of phrases for that. What is your pleasure, sir? What is your preference, sir? What is your instruction for where to place it? My goal is not to throw a paper. My goal is to make somebody smile. That's the goal. That's the goal. Is it true I got a lot of tips? A lot. Is it true I won free trips to Galveston Beach and hotels that year, it's true, it's true. When I was 18 throwing, uh, putting groceries in grocery bags, I learned that someone's name meant a lot to them. Hello, Miss Brenda, good to see you today. Where's little John? He's in school, brother, Mr. Mike. I learned that from a real successful guy working on the job before I got there. And his pockets were full of money, full of nickels and dimes and quarters. His name was Jake. I watched what he did, followed his instruction. But the first day I was hired by Wine Gardens, by Lamar Hawthorne, the manager, the, one of the assistants of one of the departments said, I hope you're not expecting a raise. None of us have had a raise in four years here. But I got four raises. I got a raise every 12 weeks. Besides the money the people tip me. That surprise you? No. No. I intend to be a good event. I intend to be an enjoyable experience. I want that. I desperately want to be a good experience in someone's life. What kind of experience are you to your boss? Your boss has goals. Your boss has dreams. And out of you and your boss, which one has the money? Obviously, you don't. That's why you're working for a boss. He's got some money and he's going to give it to you when you follow an instruction. And you look at your boss and you say... I want to help you with your dreams. And your boss looks at you and says, there's five things I want you to do today. One, two, three, four, five. Can you think you can make that happen for us? Well, I have to leave at five, you know. If I don't get it done, what happens? Well, we'll try to get it done tomorrow. But if you can, I wish you could get it done by five before you go home. Well, I can't make any promises. 
See how your attitude's already destroying the joy of a boss? Your attitude, your reaction. Who's the most important person in your life? The one who gives you a job or the one who doesn't have a job to give you? Who's the most important person in your life? The one who doesn't like what you're doing or the one who gives you money for doing it? I carry $100 bills around with me as my reward system. I gave someone yesterday some of this money. Why? They, they made me happy. They made my ministry easier for me. Folks, this is not a mystery. This is not a complicated thing. Let's go back over it. The place you create pleasure is the place your prosperity begins. When you solve a problem, you show honor. Everywhere you sow the seed of honor, you create favor. Everywhere there's favor, there's a reward of money. Doesn't have to be a lot. I like those $100 bills. I like those statements, Prophet Joshua. Gotta let you go, I know. This is so strong. If you got here late, please go back and listen to the beginning of this. The simple solution to your money world is you find somebody that's got some money and you solve a problem for them. You get an endorsement. You get a repeat invitation. You create a memory. Well, Brother Mike, I've solved problems for people and they didn't give me any money. Well, that's why you keep reading until you get to Ephesians 6, 8. Whatever you make happen for others, God will then make happen for you. God will not leave any man unrewarded. I preach for free all over the world, but God found somebody who would honor me and bless me. The key is that you sow relentlessly whatever you've been given by God. Encouragement, love, time, attention inspiration, money, knowledge. You sow yourself back into the world in parts. Sow what? Whatever you've been given. Your seed is someone's harvest. When you sow seed, you're distribu distributing harvest. Brazil is here, Canada, Jamaica is here, Kenya, Mexico, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Spain, UAE, Uganda, UK. All the money formula is, is seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. You examine your life